Welcome back to Quarantine Corner. Today we have another segment of our Mission Talks series. Recently I sat down and had a conversation via Zoom with my friends Pete and Kristen. They are a married couple that do ministry in South Asia. Because of the nature of what they do and the location, this is only an audio recording. This conversation gives an interesting perspective on what it can look like for those who have been displaced due to COVID around the globe, and they're not able to serve where they typically would be. So without further ado, here's that conversation. Well, hey guys, how are you doing? We're doing well. We're doing well. How are you today, Jimmy? I, I'm I'm doing well, thank you. Well, thanks for for taking the time to uh, to do this today and to share with us a little bit about your ministry and and how God is using you, uh, even where you are at the moment. And we'll get into that in a moment. But uh, but I figured let's let's go ahead and jump in and uh, with our questions. And I'll just start us off here. Uh, first off, why don't you you guys just tell us a little bit about who you are, uh, and what is your ministry, uh, and, and just, just kind of briefly give us an idea of what that looks like. So my name is Pete, and, and I'm here with my wife, Kristen, and we're speaking to you from, um, from Kentucky. So we're here in Kentucky with, uh, with our two daughters and our son, and um, we, we live in South Asia, but currently we're, we're residing here, and um, we have a ministry that's in a mountainous region in South Asia. Uh, very, at times, a very difficult place to get to. Um, we moved there uh, almost three years ago, and during uh, during our vision trip of going and and seeing the team for the first time, their purpose was twofold. So part of our ministry is uh, there's a medical side to the work. So we have a doctor. Uh, we have a couple midwives that are on our on our team. And the, the purpose of that was to provide a, a mercy ministry. So it was a, a way for, um, for us to be able to enter the community, uh, to be able to show tangible love to them. And, uh, and then the second purpose would be to share the good news. So in this area of the world, there's a, a great need for the gospel to be communicated to people in a way that they can understand and respond and uh, and to partner with the the church that is there, and so that is uh, that's pretty much a snapshot of of our ministry. And uh, they they complement one another. They they work well. Uh, so typically, if we go into a, a village and provide medical care, uh, so we, we we meet those physical needs. There's there's typically an opportunity to be able to to share the good news to tell people uh, about their spiritual condition, and so uh, we're excited about getting back to South Asia so that we can continue continue that work. Right. And and as you mentioned, you guys uh, currently are are in the states. You're in Kentucky at the moment, and I know that. Uh, so you came back earlier this year, I believe it was, or, or late last year and, and, uh, to, for Kristen, for you to have a baby and, uh, and then COVID happened and you guys are still here. And so, so why don't you expand on that a little bit? How has COVID affected, uh, not only the ministry that you guys are involved in, but also how's it affected your family during this time? Yeah, no, that's a great question. Um, so our son was born March 5th and which was a Thursday and the following week everything just kind of shut down I feel like throughout the country at least where we were um in Louisville Kentucky at that point and so it was like what in the world is going on <laughs> right. um and not that anyone had any clue about any of it or how it would transpire but um quickly it just felt like one thing after another started to fall apart for us regarding plans and um, trying to trying to figure out when and how we were going to get back to South Asia. So it started with like conferences not like conferences being canceled um, for potential work visas or business visas. That was later in March that those got canceled, and then um, company wide conferences that were eventually canceled that were supposed to take place at the end of May, beginning of June. Um, and in all of this, we're like, well, we still need a passport and a visa for our son that we can't apply for yet. So um, 
we've just kind of been a continual holding pattern with the rest of the world, to be honest. Um, we're just not in the home that we intended to be in. Um, yeah. So for us, we're still, we're still here. We're still in the States. Uh, we just applied for our son's passport this past week, which was great and exciting. But then we still have this question of when will they open visa services again? Right. Um, so we have, we have no idea. We're having to hold any plans or ideas quite loosely, which you hear about that in this line of work that you have to, you have to be fluid, like more than flexible, but sure. fluid. And we were kind of joking last night that it's, we feel like it's more than just fluid right now. It's like fluid on steroids. Um, <laughs> yeah. because you, you can't make any plans. Right. Um, I think that maybe they will happen. Uh, I don't mean to sound so discouraged. I don't feel as discouraged as that sounds, but this is <laughs> the, the, the reality of it right now. Yeah. Um, yeah. So for us personally, we are here. We're not in our home where we want to be back in the mountains. Um, our girls will often ask, when do we get to go back? And when are we going to go home? And I miss this person or that person. And unfortunately we just have to keep giving the answer of like, we don't know. We don't know, but we're praying. And one day, Lord willing, mm. we'll get to go back. Yeah. Um, Absolutely. yeah. So that takes on a completely different, I don't know. Our work is just very different now than mm. what it is right. when we're actually in country. Um, but even for our, the rest of our team, both nationals and other Americans that we work with, life has been turned upside down for them too. Um, our clinic has had to close at different points because of um, COVID cases, either in the village or people that they've mm -hmm. seen in the clinic um, that they suspect might be positive for COVID. They don't do any of the testing there, but have to send people to uh, a government facility about 15, 20 minutes away um, by car to get tested. So maybe people get tested, maybe they don't. Um, we were speaking with them the other day and they said that they think that there's more cases than what are actually being tested and being sure. acknowledged in that area. But for them, so the place that we live is three to four hours away from the nearest big city. Um, and for them, even if they go to that city, if they spend the night, they have to quarantine themselves for 12 days, 12 to 14 days. Um, because of the unknowns of COVID. And right. uh, so that they haven't really left our village um, except for very quick day trips in and out, which is really hard, um, really exhausting to drive mm. the mountain roads twice in one day. Um, so our teammates have pretty much been stuck and had to fend for themselves and figure out life in the midst of COVID and quarantines and restrictions and right. um, for a while they could only be out uh, from like 7 a.m. to 1 p.m. during the day and the rest of the time they were to be in their homes wow. um, so it's yeah so for the medical side of things they're still seeing patients here and there when the clinic is able to be open um, and I think that's more often now than what it was early on yeah, but good. for the other side of things, like for, for the men that we work with who typically go out and meet in different villages, they haven't been able to do that as much because of the time constraints and um, the questions of, oh, do they, do they have COVID? Do they not? Do they have Corona? Mm. And that's what we were told. Yeah. Like, um, anyone who gets sick, they're kind of ostracized from the rest of the community. And wow. if they're seen out, even if they've recovered, yeah, they're still... Yeah considered like an untouchable almost mm. if you want to describe wow. it yeah way. the evidence of a corona stigma mm -hmm. is the way it's been described to me uh, yeah. i gotcha yeah so obviously yeah just like you said things have changed your ministry's changed uh because you are here in the states why don't you share a little bit what does that look like what does that look like on a day-to-day -day basis for you guys as as missionaries being uh in a temporary new mission field Hmm. So we are the team leaders uh, for our team. And uh, so one aspect is I'm learning about how do you lead uh, long distance? 
So how do I still, <clears throat> how do I still keep my interest or, or keep my influence, um, stay connected to those who are still there or they're currently working? Yeah. And so um, I'm in the process of that right now, of thinking through, okay, how can I use my time to benefit long-term the ministry? Mm. So with COVID, it has opened up um, some space. I think for many people, it opened up space for them to consider um, kind of the direction of their life as far as those who are interested in, in this line of work. And so, uh, and just generally speaking. And so for us, it's opened up space in, in our lives to be able to start to think about some new strategies that yeah. if we were in country, we would be dealing with the uh, ups and downs of living in, in an environment that sometimes can be difficult, um, where uh, typically... Yeah, where there's just challenges that come up uh, almost daily. So there's the way that we describe it is unrelenting cross-cultural stress. Mm. So each day it just it uh, just packs another punch. So this is really nice. Um, we didn't expect this to be uh, this long. So, uh, right. but we're just trying to think of how can we uh, best uh, utilize our time. And so I'm in the middle of thinking through how do we communicate the good news to this particular group of people and uh, going to collaborate with some, some other brothers and sisters about how they uh, share the good news. And, um, and for our family, uh, we're just trying to get back to a rhythm. We've been living out of a suitcase for about five months. So, or more, because uh, we came in December of 2019 and here we are in August of 2020. Yeah. So, um, so our kids started homeschooling, Kristen's homeschooling the girls. And so that's exciting. So, um, so we're just trying to look for the blessings, right? Where is God working? Right. What can we thank him for today? Even though our lives have, have been disrupted. Hmm. That's good. Jeremy, did you want to add to that, Kristen? No, I think that summarizes it. Okay. That's good. Well, finally, final question I have for you is, is kind of twofold. So uh, first is, is how can we pray and support uh, the ministry uh, that you guys do, and and then secondly, uh, specifically, how can we pray and support your family? Hmm. So um, your prayers are needed, and we will use them. So send them our way. Uh, somebody told me that one told me that about prayer uh, mm -hmm. one time. Uh, he was just explaining to me about how he would ask others for prayer. And he would just tell people that that he uses them up. And uh, that's so true, right? In ministry and yeah. serving yeah. the Lord is that we're, they're not going to be wasted. And so uh, on top of us having a baby and then also going through um, a pandemic or a pandemic that's still happening, uh, our daughter uh, in the middle of all this was diagnosed with epilepsy. Right. So uh, the storm keeps coming. And uh, thankfully, we were able to get some tests here. That's kind of the silver lining of being here is we were able to get some tests completed and they diagnosed her with epilepsy. So, uh, I joke that she's joined my club. So, cause <laughs> I, I, I take meds for that. And, uh, so, I mean, it kind of normalizes it in some sense for her. So that's, uh, so we can see, we see some good in that, but, uh, but we're still that that's very new to our front door. So the, um, she was diagnosed just a couple weeks ago. And uh, so it's still um, a concern of ours. And mm -hmm. so we're praying, uh, need your prayers for uh, trusting the Lord in that uh, and making decisions about um, just about her care. Uh, and sure. so uh, and then in addition to that, I would say we need prayer for um, just taking our thoughts captive. There's that scripture that says that we should take every thought captive to the obedience of Christ. And so I think right now we can think about a lot of different ways that our life could go, the direction that our life could go. Uh, that's true for a lot of people. But for us, we can dwell on that. And so uh, just pray that the Lord would uh, protect our mind and would give us clear thoughts about how we can serve others and, and how we can um, continue to cultivate that passion that we have. Right. Uh, yeah. And uh, when we came to the States, we were in the middle of, well, we had just completed our language training. So we were at a new phase of language and, and that's, that's been shut down. That's been disrupted. Mm -hmm. And so, um, so that's, yeah, that's, that's two ways you can pray. Kristen, anything that you would add? Um, for our ministry, just as, I mean, as our team, both, Again, like the whole team collectively, not mm -hmm. just the Americans that are working there. Um, pray for them as they continue to try to navigate. Like, what does 
What does life look like now? What does work look like now? Right. Um, how do we engage people? Hmm. How do we engage people with limited access to them? And then once that opens up, how do we engage them now? Um, so yeah, if you'll pray for our team that we can Absolutely. scheme together on how to how to reach this area with the gospel. Um, it's a very spiritually dark area that mm. desperately needs mm -hmm. um, to know that there is freedom and that there is good news in Jesus. Um, yeah, so if you'll pray for pray for all of us collectively as we as we scheme and plan and and dream for the future with that. Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, again, thank you both for uh, taking the time to do this and just sharing uh, a little bit about who you are and and how God is using you and uh, even even where you are uh, at the moment. And uh, Pete, just as you said, you know, this was kind of an unexpected furlough, if you will, uh, and, and getting to to enjoy your new baby and, and, and grow as a family. And, uh, and I have full confidence that God is using this time to, to just uh, restore and refresh you guys, uh, uh, to be able to continue to do the work he's called you to do. And I'm so excited for that for you. And, uh, but again, thank you so much for taking the time to do this and sharing with us. Yeah. Thank you, Jimmy. We appreciate the opportunity to tell, um, a little bit about the story that God is writing and uh, for those of you who are listening, we would love to tell you in more detail uh, where, where we live and a little bit more about our work. So feel free to, to reach out to Jimmy, send him an email, um, go knock on his front door to bother him. <laughs> yeah. um, if you would like more information on how you can further support Pete and Kristen, be sure to email me at this email address. And I'll also have it located in the description of this video. Be sure to tune in here each Monday for more resources just like this. I'll see you next week.